Rated M for Mature. Hi, welcome to another episode of Playing Dead. I'm AJ Locasio, and on this episode, we'll be meeting two members of the development team, Dennis Lenart and Nick Herman. We'll be discussing details from episode three, as well as answering your questions right here on Playing Dead. Guys, thank you for being on the show today. Yeah. You're welcome. So tell us, what exactly did you guys do on the game? I directed the episode. Basically oversaw everything from um, a lot of the writing to art, animation. The team makes the game. I just sit there and sleep. You just take the responsibility. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Nick, so you... Uh, yeah, no, I was the uh, lead cinematic artist for episode two. And um, basically it's just like working with Dennis and the uh, cinematics team to... So you also did, you're pulling double duty too, because you were uh, Glenn. If I'm not mistaken. In episode in the game. one. I'm yes. revealing that. Episode one. Yeah. 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 It sounds a lot like this, actually. So this episode, uh, episode two, I just played it a couple days ago for the first time, and it was it was dark as hell. I was like, this is like the first episode, you're like, yeah, zombies. This is, you know, like it's scary. And but this one was just like, like I was terrified <laughs> the entire time. I was like, this 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 is messed up. Yeah. Well, we didn't know how far we could take it. Like, you know, we always had this like pie in the sky of, oh yeah, by the you know, by the end of it, you're gonna feel kind of depressed. But I think we ended up just Nose diving off of that cliff. Does it get worse? And yeah. You guys hit like the pinnacle yeah. of like human like it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Yeah. It really doesn't. I can't wait. <laughs> episode one looks like Disneyland compared to the rest of the season. Yeah. Oh, episode man. two. Episode. Yeah. Episode like, three gets. Yeah. It's it's deep. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Goes well, it's like far. the more time you spend with the characters, the more the relationships uh, get crazy and right. all the conflict between everyone. Well, and you just get more like, attached to the characters too. I mean, for like, sure. Yeah. Like you just the the emotional connection there gets just gets so strong that if anything happens to these people, you're you've been with them, them for months now. I mean, as these episodes roll out. So here's something that bothers me, Mark. Where the hell did he come from? I didn't want to just say three months later, and Shit. it's the exact that same many? people with the I exact know. same you know, relationships as three months ago, because then it just feels like nothing happened. So Mark was kind of like a cool little addition to say, "Hey, you know, our characters have been living their lives since you've been gone, and yeah. and right. there's this whole new guy there." So psychology is clearly a humongous part of this whole game. That's a hard thing to do. One of the great things, like, Telltale is just basically a gigantic room where everyone just shares ideas all day. And so, you know, you're always trying to, like, one-up things that other people did. When you see something cool, you're like, oh, man, I want to make something cool, too. Okay, I'm going to go do that and go back to your desk and think of some way to make your scene cool. And so, you know, once it's, you know it's working when you go around and tell everyone, like, hey, here's this cool bit that happens in a upcoming episode. And people are like, oh, oh. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Like, yeah. that's the reaction you want. And then you're like, all right, that's working. Let's yeah. <laughs> file that away and move on to something else. Stats obviously are a big part of this, and you guys keep track of them quite religiously. Yeah, yeah. we're tracking everything you do. Yeah. I have some of these stats here. 87% of people didn't shoot Jolene. This is a character, you know, you don't know at that point, is she going to become part of my team or what? Yeah. And so... Yeah. You're trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. And I think also at the same time, once she starts saying stuff that makes you know that she knows Danny somehow, you're kind of like, okay, you know, I could just blow her away right now, but it's probably advantageous for me to like actually sit and listen to what she has to say and see if I get any more information. So, 68% of people didn't kill Larry. Which is interesting. Yeah, no, it's, he's been nothing but a pain in the butt the entire time. Yeah, all we all we heard from players was, "Man, I can't wait to kill that guy." I just, if I get a chance to kill that guy, I'm just gonna off him as soon as I can. And then we're like, "There you go." Yeah, it was. Just, ah. yeah, it was <laughs> I did the same thing. I was like, "I don't like Larry," but I was like, "I don't." The situation was so grim, yeah. and she was, you know, it was it was very difficult to just go. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, murder, you know, an added layer to that is if people in the room are going to be affected by this decision I make. So it's not just right. you and Larry in a room. And you're just, you know, it's like I, I have to live with these people too. Yeah. So. Clementine. The food aspect of the game is when you have to choose. You know, there's ten people and you have four things of food and you have to give it to someone. What we found out or what the stats were is that Clem came first, followed by Duck, then Mark, and then Larry. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me because you know none of us really like Larry that much. Seems like maybe people are just they don't like him because he doesn't like them so then they're like well maybe if I give him food. Maybe, maybe, yeah exactly. Maybe he'll like yeah. me a little bit more but. It's, <laughs> that's why I wanted to resuscitate him I was like if I could bring him back to life yeah. Yeah. he'll like me more but that's a weird thing to be like you know to give him food. Yeah. St. John Brothers. We get the option to kill both of them and apparently 83% of people didn't kill both. 
which to me is weird because I was like, these guys are dangerous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Who did you? Did you guys kill? <clears throat> well, I mean, I think I think that way that works. It seems like everyone, you know, they get out of the meat locker. They're like super stoked. They're like, we're gonna take get, take this place back. Like, mm-hmm. we're gonna get revenge, and. Uh, you know, you you come across Danny and you get into that struggle and you get the chance to kill him and everyone's like, hell yeah, like let's do it. And you do it, and then there's that immediate like that that guilt and that and you look over and Clementine's watching and and then you realize, oh yeah, yeah, this is I'm not this isn't just a game about like you know action. This is like this is gonna affect her now. Right. And I think by the time you get back out outside with we, uh, you know, that's now you're thinking about that again. You're like, oh god, right. am I gonna do this again? Like, is she gonna see this twice in one night? You know, watching his face get bruised slowly, and then it cuts to that wide shot, and you see everyone you know, Staring like, at you. looking yeah. at you, and it's like, they're watching me be a murderer. Did you keep going? I kept going. All the way? <laughs> yeah. Nice. I was like, well, if I don't do this, this guy's going to come back, he's going to murder us. Like, now he has a reason for revenge, because I just killed his mother and his brother. Yeah. That's, it's funny, too. It's like, we have stats on, like, how many people, you know, did one punch, two punches, three, and, like, whether it was left or right-handed, like, right. all sorts of crazy stuff. But yeah, it's funny how like there's definitely a, a peak in the numbers. Yeah, where it's like, yeah, it's once you get that wide shot and you see the whole group kind of coming over and watching you, and then it goes back to like, oh, you can keep beating them up. And a lot of people go. are like, uh, maybe <laughs> not. That was my instinct initially was to go like, I should stop. And I was like, you know what? No, yeah, this, <laughs> this guy's gonna come back and he's gonna kill us. So this really screwed me up was the food. The food, uh, when you find the car and uh, you come upon it, apparently 56% of people chose to eat the food from the car. Take the food. food. And which is reasonable because you come, you know, you show up and these people have clearly left their car on and they're, you know, neglecting the supply they have. But uh, I actually got into an argument with my girlfriend while I was, because she came into the room and she was watching and she was like, don't do it, don't take the food. And I was like, no, 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 screw you, screw you. So I chose to take the food and then like guilt set in. And I was like, looking at the corner, making sure the save bar wasn't happening. I was like, mm-hmm, and I reset the PlayStation. Oh, wow. I mean, I think it's great that people had that moral dilemma and, and, and were so evenly split. Like, I think that's when we feel like we did a good job. Yeah. All right. So the big question, episode three. What can you tell us? What hints can you drop? Overall, I mean, the rest of the season, starting with episode three, there's stuff that if we told you, you would probably cry or throw up or want to shoot yourself, which is good. Wow. So yes. instead, I'll play the game and do that in the privacy <laughs> yeah, of my right. own home. Good. All right. <laughs> the stuff you're doing with Kenny, um, sort of, did you side with him or not in the meat locker? Uh, Lily, by the same sort of other side of the coin. You're definitely going to meet some new characters, uh, including a young couple, Krista and Omid, uh, which means that Lee will definitely have some trust issues to deal with, especially after what happened with the St. John's and the Bandits in episode two. People will die. I mean, this is Walking Dead. This is, it's, yeah. it's just part of how it is and how, what happens and, 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 and how, how responsible are you for their deaths, too, is another thing that we're going to be seeing. (laughs) Great. All right, so my favorite part is uh, Q&A. Questions from fellow Telltalers. Hey, questions. All right. (laughs) So Tyler J. asks, is the game going to be available as a disc that he could buy in a store? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, once we finish the season, we will want to get it out to everyone who prefer to have it in one big, in a nice big box and a everything they can play back to back. Uh, our friend Patrick asks, uh, is there gonna be any romance budding between Carly and Lee? Hmm. Well, I mean. <laughs> I think there, there's, you know, there's, there's hints, uh, and I think some people read into it more than others. Yeah, um, she knows about Lee's past yeah, before right. the apocalypse, so I mean, there's, there's a lot going there. You know, they have a secret, and that yep. brings people together sometimes. Jackie asks, uh, if the zombie that bit Brenda St. John was Mark, and if so, how did he get back up the stairs? Yeah. It was Mark, yeah. very observant. Basically, when they throw you in the meat locker, they have to take care of Mark because he's crawling around, so they threw him upstairs. And then at the time, he wasn't a zombie. Evan asks, will the game be coming to the Android store? Currently, there aren't any plans for uh, Android support, but, you know, it's Telltale, so we always want to get all of our products as many places as we can, so I wouldn't rule it out for the future. So Malachi wants to know, what happens if you don't choose a piece of dialogue within the allotted time? Well, I mean, it, it definitely depends on the situation. Uh, a lot of the times, you know, silence is always an option in, in Walking Dead. So um, you can either choose that to be your choice or you can let it time out and Lee will remain silent because you didn't say anything. That affects how people perceive what you are. All right. Silence is consent. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for talking to us today. Well, no problem. Indeed. Thanks for having us. Before we close out this edition of Playing Dead, I just wanted to invite anyone that's going to PAX Prime to Playing Dead Live. That's right. I'll be your host for a live episode of Playing Dead with Gary Whitta, Sean Vanneman, and Jake Rodkin. So if you're going to PAX, be sure to join us to talk about The Walking Dead. You may get your chance to get your hands on some unique swag.
implying that it's slowly going to turn into just counseling sessions for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. More, and more disheveled. <laughs> <laughs> so I just played through episode four. <laughs> <laughs> you have like an IV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. That's how this is going.